first of all, make some racket for the 150,000 poster workers on strike today. <laughs> different one for the greedy Tories. We are so proud to be here today with RMT members, with Aslif members, with TSSA members, with Unite members, in the biggest coordinated strike action for years and years. More to come. We have 115,000 posties on strike today. We've had 5,000 post office workers on strike last Wednesday. We've got 40,000 BT workers on strike next Thursday. Yay! And we've got, and we're very proud of this, by 95% all of the cleaners in Royal Mail voted yes for strike action this week. There were more posties who voted for strike action than people voted for Liz Trust to be Prime Minister. That is a fact. We're in a country where profits have risen 273% since 2019, where CEO pay has gone north for 200% rise, where private companies that run our public services are taking profits out of them to the tunes of hundreds of millions of pounds, where energy companies are taking billions off of us and getting 150 billion more given to them by this government, where there's tax cuts for the rich and belt tightening for the poor, and this is because we're saying enough is enough! No money for pensions, no money for pay rises, but they had 160 billion somewhere to give away to their rich mates. What an absolute We, we cannot let them keep taking us for mugs! Other countries have done it differently. They haven't increased electricity and gas prices, despite them importing far more from Russia and Ukraine than this country does. They have not done it. They've done what we should do. Take them into public ownership. We're proud to be as well one of the founding members of the Enough is Enough campaign. The five demands we have to tackle the crisis. A real pay rise, slashing energy bills, ending food poverty, decent homes for all and taxing the rich. It's about being on picket lines. It's about campaigning in workplaces. And it's about standing to every striking worker. We're out in strike to get fair pay. Obviously the cost of living now is going through the roof and management are expecting us to be working for the same amount of pay as before. The reliance on overtime was a major thing. Overtime as it's been cut back, you know I mean, like staff shortages, you know, which we obviously didn't have before vehicle shortages, scanner shortages. We can't do the job how we used to do it. They need to invest in this company. You know, we want to see like, you know, fair working practices, you know, bring in more staff, you know, because at the end of the day, these staff are overstretched and it's going to be terrible at Christmas because we're so short of staff, it's, it's crazy. Now we've been privatised, we've got the shareholders and the CEO earning fortunes. A couple of months ago, record profits were made in the region of about 758 million pounds. 400 million of that was paid out to shareholders. So they would have bring Sunday working, they would have bring in annualised hours where they bring you in when they need you. It's all about savings and cost cutting. The consistency of the service has gone downhill. Whereas before you had postmen doing the same rounds, knowing the customer, if there was a problem with a letter like half address or something like that, the postman would have local knowledge to know how to deliver that mail. Now postmen are moving around under extreme pressure to deliver letters on time. The duties are almost undoable. People are working over their time and they're not getting rewarded for it. More and more people are starting to say we've had enough. It's a massive fight for everybody. You know, so everybody needs to join in and get involved. Teachers' pay has fallen by 20% in the last 12 years and now they're expecting teachers and educators to have the biggest real terms pay cut in history. We're having a consultative ballot uh, right now for strike action uh, over pay. We're very confident that we're going to get a positive result. 
and uh, then if so uh, we will move to a, a postal ballot. Coordinated action and more extended action is the way forward. Recently the bus workers in North London voted to go on indefinite strike action uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, won an 11% pay increase out of, the, out of their employers uh, by that threat. They didn't even actually take the action. In food industry our members are key workers in many areas and they're getting low wages. We are uh, trying to organize in North London especially in many uh, small businesses. We are a new branch of UNITE, just recently launched. And today with some of our members we come to support our postal workers. I've just been elected as the convener for Harangay Community uh, Action Network. We decided that uh, it's important for the trade unions to start to link in with communities. So we've got a number of community groups. We've got Justice Claimants, we've got the Renters Union, people from environmental groups anti-racism groups, the community centre that we're in right now, Dimeir, they've been assisting us and helping us and supplying us with teas and coffees, etc. To open our community centre 6 o'clock, 6.30, that's not a favour, that's our role. Migrant workers, migrant people must uh, come together with the workers in this country and do everything shoulder to shoulder because they can't divide us. Now's the time. We've got to step up and we've got to start working with our communities and we've got to start to change things in this country and I think that we can do that. If you're not in a union, join a union today. Get everyone in your workplace in that union. Bring all of those workers into activity. Bring that activity into campaigning and bring that campaign into industrial action. We are balloting every single university in the UK up for, uh, to tackle low pay and pension robbery. So come October, our union will be in a position to have strike action across further and higher education and shut down every uni in the UK. Doctors, nurses and midwives are balloting for strike action. Yeah. We have a 40,000 shortfall of nurses, 12,000 shortfall of hospital doctors and 7 million on waiting lists. The final nail in the coffin passed in July with the Health and Care Act that has converted the NHS into an American system and Truss has announced that she's going to divert 10 billion from the NHS, already one of the worst funded healthcare systems in the G7, into social care. And yes, we do need money for social care, but that cannot come on the expense of our health. It is an absolute fucking disgrace that there are more food banks than there are McDonald's branches in this country. Make some noise if you <laughs> In the likes of Food London, we demand food costs are built into our wages and benefits as part of living incomes. We campaign for nationally agreed conditions for all food workers and volunteers. That's for the people, the army of volunteers who are working in the food banks. We need universal preschool food for all primary and secondary age children. We need to use our school kitchen so we can feed all in need in our community. Hunger is a physical choice, enough is enough. We need a charter for renters' rights, ensuring standards, including in housing association homes. We need to cap rents, and we need to build more than 100,000 council homes a year. And we need our homes insulated. We are sending solidarity to, with the women of Iran right now, struggling. They've had enough. Working people in Sudan have sent a message to us, wishing us well in this struggle. Today we just had a report, young workers in a retail outlet in Manchester have walked off the job to attend the rally in Manchester. We will not accept cuts, we will not accept austerity, we refuse to be poor anymore. We are going to fight for our class, we are going to lift up our hearts, we are going to apply our brain, we are going to create a mass movement of working people and we are going to change this country and we are going to win for our people. Victory to the RMT, victory to the CWU, victory to the workers.